Hi guys. So in this session, I am gonna give you a hands-on practice with Python, and uh, this is going to be a very short tutorial. But we are gonna cover a lot of Python that will be useful for building your machine learning algorithms, right? So this would be very useful for beginners, especially those people who have not written code in Python. But you should know how to write code in some other language. So let's get started. All right. So uh, we are gonna talk about how we can write some basic functionality in Python. We are gonna talk about functions, variables, if else conditions, loops, right? So for this, I'm going to use a Jupyter notebook and I have installed a theme so that it looks black, right? So you can write this code in a Python file. You can also write this code in a notebook or you can also uh, write it in a command line shell, right? So Python shell. So let us get started and the first thing is that like any other language python has the concept of variables right so let us discuss uh, discuss about variables and you can create any kind of variables right so you can have a x which is equal to 2 you can also have x equals to 20.5 right uh, let's say this is x2 or let's say this is y and let's say we have a z which is hello right so you do not need to define the data type you can create variables then you can also print them let's say i want to print x i want to print z i also want to print x plus z right so i'm uh, using python 3 right uh, here you got an error that you are doing x plus z right so x is a integer but z is a string right so if you want to do something like this you have to first convert the integer into a string right so you have to write str right so it would be two followed by hello, right? And if you want to do uh, x plus y, then it would work perfectly fine, right? So you can see the output here. Right? So this is how you define variables and how you print them. And you can also print the data type, right? So data type exists by default. So x is an integer, right? So you can say print type of x, right? So this will tell you that x is a integer you can also print type of uh, z right? so it says it belongs to the class string so z is a string as we have seen right and uh, you can also work on strings right so let us write some code on strings and suppose you have a string let's say my string which is equal to some a b c d f g h i and right so this is a string suppose you want to print it right so you just need to write print my string so this gives you the entire string but suppose you want to print a part of the string right so you want to slice it right so i can say that i can use this operator right so this basically denotes the start and this position denotes the end right so if you leave end and you give start it will give you the string starting from the second index right so right from this point till the last right and if you want to print till the fourth index right so this four is not included right so start part is included and the ending part is not included right so let me clarify this thing so we have something called slicing in python and you you use this notation and here you give the starting point and here you give the ending point the start point is included and the end point is included excluded so this is equivalent to saying start and right so suppose you have hello and this is indexed as 0 1 2 3 4 right and if you write and suppose this is equal to s right so if you write s followed by 1 followed by 3 right so it will include all characters which will start from this index and end before three. So the output will be EL. So this is the output that you will get, right? So this is about slicing in Python, right? And then you can also have you, if you want to access the last element, right? So you can also use the index minus one. So print my string of minus one, right? So this will give you the last element if you want the second last element you can use minus 2 which is h right so negative indexes also work in python right and you can also have slicing starting from the very end suppose if you want to print my string and uh, suppose you want to start from 
जीरो uh, इंडेक्स then you can keep it either zero or you can skip it and you want to print all elements except the last element then you can write this thing right so you you can see that it starts from the zeroth index and it ends before the last element because the ending index is minus 1 right if you give minus 2 it will skip the last two elements right so this is how the uh, slicing and strings work right and you can also do some other operations right uh, maybe you can split a string right so uh, let us write a sentence right so let's say sentence hello world uh, i am learning python right and suppose you want to find out all the tokens in this uh, sentence let's say tokens so you can use the split function so sentence dot split and here you can give the space right and i want to split this sentence about spaces right so let's say, let us print what what are tokens right so you can see you got the all the list of tokens right so you got all the list of tokens which are separated by the this character space character right so this is how the split function works and you also have a join function in python so let, let us talk about the join method right so let's say uh, new sentence equals to uh, suppose you want to uh, join all the characters with the hyphen and then you can call the join function and here you can give the list of tokens right and let us print the new sentence right so you can see all the characters all the words are now joined by a hyphen right all the words are now joined by a hyphen so join function will insert this string or this character uh, between all the tokens which you have extracted right and in python 3 you also have a range method right so in python 2 the range method uh, gave you a list of integers but in python 3 range gives you an iterator over the range right suppose you want to uh, iterate want to iterate over a loop so you have to write for i in range let's say range is 1 to 10 and you want to print i right so you can execute it so you can see i i is taking values from 1 to 9 right so i is going from 1 to 9 so starting point is included ending point is not included and you can also specify the jump suppose you want to take a jump of 3 right so from 1 you go to 4 and then you go to 7 right so this is how the for loop works and what else we can also have if else conditions right in python so let us talk about uh if else conditions and before that let me also show you how you can define a function let's say define let's say we we want to uh, write a function let's say weather forecast right and here we get get a parameter which is weather right so weather weather could be anything and you can check if weather equals sunny right so you can say print it's a hot day right otherwise you can say that uh, let's say it is a uh, rainy day let's say or you can use else if right so else if is written as elif weather equals to hot or you can say rainy you can say uh, it's raining and then you can write else print uh cool weather right and you can also call this function right so we do not use brackets in python instead all the indentation that we are using here defines the scope right so we know that this statement is inside this if block and this if block is inside this function right so we are not using brackets instead python uses indentation to highlight highlight which code belongs to which block right and you can call this function weather forecast and you can pass the weather let's say the weather is rainy right
right so uh, yeah there should be colon here and here right so it is raining right so it is raining so do not uh, forget to add these colons after every if else if statement right so this is how you can define the functions and uh, this is how you can write the if else statement right so python also offers you offers you some basic kind of data structures and now let us talk about uh, basic data structures which are available in python right so these are uh, lists tuples and dictionaries right so we will be doing a lot of work with uh, these data structures so let us learn about them right so the first thing is a list so list lists in python are like a collection of uh, you can say items right so these items could be int integers it could be strings it could be another list so you define a list like this sir. so l1 is a empty list so using square brackets you can define a list and you can also define a list using a list constructor right so you can make a object of the list class right so l1 and l2 are both lists and if you want to pr add some elements you can write print oh sorry l1 dot append and you can give some elements let's say one uh, l1 dot append let's say five right and then you can say print l1 right you can see that list contains two elements right and you can also initialize this list with some number of elements and then you can tr uh, try to print it now it contains more number of elements right so the append function always adds at the tail of the link list right so this is a list and you can also use slicing with the uh, lists so if you want to print l1 some part of the link list you can say print the element from 3 to 5 so this will print these two elements right these two elements right and you can also create a list let's say for i in range uh, let's say 5 you can say l2 dot append i into i right so if you want to do a cube so you can write i double star 3 which basically means i raised to the power 3 right and then you can print l2 right let us print l2 so this this will store the cubes of all the numbers from 0 to 4 right? so this is how you uh, work with lists in python right so we will be doing more work more work in the uh, tutorials which i will be sharing on machine learning and now let us talk about another data structure which is called a tuple right so a tuple is again a collection of items but uh, these items are immutable right so you cannot update the items once they are created right so you can update the link list list but you cannot update the tuple right so suppose you want to create a tuple so this is written like this right so you can also have t2 equals to apple one guava right so print t2 right so if you use round brackets the data structure is tuple and if you use square brackets this is a list and all these items can be heterogeneous as well right so it is not necessary that you store only integers you can have a list of integers plus strings plus you can have a, another list inside it right so this is a nested list right and you can use this concept to build 2d arrays as well right okay so this is a tuple and now I'm going to talk about dictionaries, right? So dictionaries are like hash maps, right? And hash maps are basically key value pairs, right? So suppose you want to store uh, some fruits along with their prices, right? So you can create a hash map like this. So this creates an empty hash map, the round uh, curly brackets, right? And if you want to insert some key, val key value pairs into it, you can use that key is mango and let's say the price is 100 right and let's say the key is apple the price is let's say there are two two three kinds of prices for the apple right so we will define an array for prices or a list for prices let's say 10 50 and 80 right so three varieties of apples are there and these are costing this much right and you can also have uh, guava right and followed by you can have uh, anything else let's say a floating point value 80.5 right and if you 
print uh, fruit you will see that it is a collection of key value pairs and if you print type of fruit right so it will give you that it is a dictionary in python right so it is a dictionary and you can also define a dictionary with the constructor let's say uh, my dictionary right this is equal to dictionary right so th this also creates a dictionary and you can iterate over the keys right so you can uh, suppose you want to print what all keys are there right so print uh, fruit dot keys right so th this gives you mango apple and guava right and if you want to iterate over the values you can use fruit dot values right and if you want to see what is the price of mango then you can write print uh, fruit of mango so this will give you the price of the mango right so this is how you create dictionaries in python right and so this was the basic stuff and in the uh, and before we end this tutorial i would uh, like to talk about one more thing which is called args and quarks right so let us discuss this concept as well so suppose you want to define a function sum and it accepts some number of parameters right so if let us say for now it accepts two parameters and uh, let's say you want to do a sum let's say there is an answer which is equal to x1 plus x2 right and you return the answer right and you call this function sum with these two parameters and you see the answer is 3 but suppose it has some param more number of parameters which are not known right so number of parameters is not known to us in that case we can define a variable with a single star which is called args right and let us say print args right? so you can see that this variable is accepting all the unknown parameters right so these are not these parameters are not known so args automatically accepts these parameters and what you can do you can iterate over the this right so for i in args you can say that answer plus equals to i right and you can finally re return the answer now you can see the answer is 18 so if you if if you want to send parameters and the number of parameters is not known you can use this method args right and there is one more variable which is called quags right so this quags accepts all the named parameters right so you can also define let's say uh, there is a parameter b which is equal to let's say 20 there is a parameter c which is equal to 30 there is a parameter d which is equal to 40.5 right so args will not accept these parameters you can see that args is accepting only the parameters which do not have a uh, variable on the left hand side but if you print quags it will accept all the parameters all the named parameters right so such parameters are also called a named parameters because they have a variable associated with it right so let us see what what quags is right so quags is basically a dictionary right so you can iterate over the dictionary and you can also iterate over the values and you can uh, add these values to your sum right so you can say for j in uh, quags dot values and answer plus equal to j right? okay uh, this should be a round bracket here right so you can see that we are able to iterate over the all the values uh, in this function right so this was about the basic python in the next video i will be talking more about uh, python we will be talking about numpy we will be talking about matplotlib and so thanks for watching i will see you in the next tutorial